Hi everyone, I'm Emily Gibbons from the Literacy Nest, and I want to have a conversation today about the types of books that might be in your classrooms, in your homes, or in your tutoring facilities, and the purposes for each of them. I'm going to be discussing uh, three different types of books that you may be seeing, predictable text, leveled books, and decodable books. So let's go right in. So I have a few examples I'll be sharing with you. All right, share my screen here. Okay, I'm just gonna go back here. Okay. All right, thanks for bearing with me for just a second there. So we have books in our classrooms and some well, actually all books serve a purpose. And I say this again and again, there is a time and a place for really for, for every book. But some books are better suited for our teaching goals than others. But all of these books can be enjoyed by children for different reasons. So the first types of books you might be seeing are books that you would typically find in a preschool or kindergarten, or maybe even in a first grade classroom. And those are predictable books. Now, what are the common features of predictable books? I've chosen two here. I've chosen uh, Pizza Pat, which is really a play on the uh, house that Jack built style of picture book. There is a high level of predictability. There is rhyme, rhythm. There's a repetition of the language, which really is enjoyable for, especially for preschoolers. And they enjoy sort of being able to read along when it might not be actually reading, but more memorization. Another popular book there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. And that's sort of one you can sort of sing along to, right? There's a little song about that. I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, right? So it makes it really, really easy for those pre-readers to follow along, learn about concepts of print, things like that. But these books, these predictable books are not suitable for decoding practice. And why not? Because the language that is in there may be offering phonics skills and concepts that children, especially pre-readers, are really, they don't have the background knowledge or the exposure to be able to decode them independently. These are books that you can certainly enjoy as you read alouds, but when it comes to strictly teaching children the code, having them practice decoding, these are really not appropriate to be using in your classrooms. Uh, some of the younger grades you might find, there are a lot of predictable books, especially being used in your guided reading groups. And so I'm hoping with this presentation, you'll sort of uh, rethink that decision-making with the types of books that you decide to use um, for small group reading. The next set of books, these are people, um, educators are really familiar with, and these are leveled books. Leveled books are ordered by level of difficulty, easy to more complex. They use a gradient of text to gauge that, whether it be the length, the layout, structure. Um, in the very beginning of leveled books, you may find those easier readers use a lot of high frequency words. There may be some predictable text. Early leveled readers, you can have children be able to heavily rely on the illustrations to be able to pretty much guess the text in front of them. As you increase in complexity, there are far more literary features in there. The content becomes a little more sophisticated. So we move from more familiar settings to more mature. Many challenged readers have a difficult time accessing the text in level readers because they simply do not have the solid foundational reading skills to help them as they read these books. And so what ends up happening with more of the challenged readers is they become compensators. They try to rely too heavily on the pictures or are being prompted to. They are being asked 
to guess at words instead of using solid decoding foundational strategies. And so there is um, a challenge here with when to use leveled readers, particularly with children who really don't have the foundation yet to move into literature within the classroom setting. There are times to use leveled books, but as I get into the next type of reader, you'll hopefully be able to have a little more clarity on that. Okay. So the next type of books are the books that are our training wheels. These are the books that are helping our children learn to access the code to be able to become more fluent readers so that reading becomes much, much more um, fluid and smoother. All right? and there's no guesswork here. With decodable books, children should at least be able to read them with about 95% accuracy. They are, they have the text in decodable books really uses the alphabetic code. There are no times to use picture clues or any kind of memorization or predictability. Can decodable books have pictures or illustrations? Absolutely. But the picture is not going to be there for a child to look at a sentence in the text and then be prompted to look at a picture and guess what that word might be within the context of the sentence. We want decodable books that have many examples of the phonic skills or patterns that you are either A, currently teaching like in that moment. So you are, say, teaching uh, the CH digraph that week and your text is supporting that, or previously taught skills. So when the child has the decodable reader in front of them, they are able to easily practice their decoding skills. And I see decodable books, once again, as the training wheels. Are they reading decodable books forever? No, or decodable passages or whatever you're using. No, but you are building reader confidence so that you're preparing them to be able to go into literature as those leveled readers were shown in the previous slide. Another example of decodable books right here, the ones that I have written recently for Hegarty, can be seen as a bridge to literature. Decodable books are really only going to be as reliable as the skills that you have previously taught or are currently teaching right now. So in some of the books, you'll notice that they're a culmination of phonics skills or concepts or patterns that have been previously taught. So you could really only use a particular book after you had been practicing that with a child or your class. They are still highly decodable. Children can still access them with ease and practice their decoding skills. These are not leveled readers though. All right, so I'm hoping today, I'm just going to close out of this. I'm hoping that by sharing the difference between predictable texts, leveled books, and decodable books, you'll be able to see what really fits best in a structured literacy model in your classrooms and what is really going to support your children as they become more proficient readers. Thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this video today, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.